IHGN Studios. It's Braves Beat. What's up, Braves? Welcome to this week's episode of Braves Beat. I'm Rama Sardar. And I'm Jensen Cassidy. Hey, it's National Day of Unplugging. Oh, shoot. I'll go off the grid. Let's just get into the news. Would you like to meet an acclaimed author? If so, Kristen Simmons will be discussing her new book, Scammed, which is a contemporary intrigue-filled drama where Pretty Little Liars meets Ocean's Eleven. She will be in the MP room on Monday, March 9th, during Third Bell Only. If you're interested in attending, please see Mrs. Mendoza. Indian Hill High School is working with the American Red Cross to hold a blood drive on Monday, March 16th. We would like to invite all students above the age of 16 to donate blood during the school day. Just one donation can save up to three lives, and someone in the U.S. is in need of blood every two seconds. Those participating will need parental consent to donate. Please contact us with any questions or concerns you may have. National Athletic Training Month is held every March in order to spread awareness about the important work of athletic trainers. Here are a few fun facts. Athletic trainers wear many hats. Teacher, mentor, counselor, problem solver, mechanic, weatherman, laundress, and seamstress, just to name a few. They know what combination of Gatorade powder flavors mixed together make a delicious sideline refreshing drink during football season, like Terry's famous swamp water. Stay tuned next week for more info. Hand washing is one of the best ways to protect yourself and your family from getting sick. Dylan sat down with Mrs. Hoyer, our school nurse, to get some tips on effective hand washing. Roll the clip. Hello Braves, I'm Dylan Condor along with Mrs. Hoyer to talk about effective hand washing to help prevent the spread of illnesses. Why should I use soap and water to wash my hands? So this may seem like an obvious answer, but germs can get onto your hands and items you touch throughout the day. When your hands are dirty, it's best to wash with soap and water to remove whatever germs or chemicals may be on them. Well, should I use warm or cold? Actually, either is fine, um, as long as it's clean water. Does uh, soap have to be antibacterial? No, plain soap and water work just as well. Oh, okay. Uh, what if I don't have soap? When hands are not visibly dirty, you can use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. How long am I supposed to scrub when I'm washing my hands? So scrubbing your hands for at least 20 seconds is most effective. I'm sure you've heard of singing Happy Birthday Song twice through, mm -hmm. and that works. All right, uh, do I have to clean under my fingernails? Yes. Germs like to hide under fingernails, so make sure to clean there too, as well as between your fingers and the tops of your hands. Should I use a towel or should I just air dry? Either is fine. Um, if you use a towel, just make sure it's a clean one. Do you have anything else that you would like to tell our viewers? I do. Thank you for this opportunity to briefly touch on an important health topic. As I'm sure everyone is aware, there are viruses and bacteria that we as a community want to protect ourselves and each other from. The best way to do this is to wash our hands effectively. Positive peer pressure is also a great thing, so be sure to encourage your friends and family to wash their hands too. All right, thank you. Thanks for taking out some time to answer some important questions about effective hand washing. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks Dylan and Mrs. Hoyer. Working as a team should help us stay healthy. This past Saturday, the IH Competitive Writing Team went to Columbus to compete in a competitive writing tournament that occurs once every four years. Students sat in three rounds, 45 minutes each, to handwrite complete short stories based on given genres and prompts. Please congratulate these competitors. A few students from Indian Hill scored among the top 15 in each division. Please congratulate Elsa Zhu, who placed 12th overall in 9th and 10th grade, and Ricky Martin, who placed 2nd overall in 11th and 12th grade. Great work, Braves. Last Friday, Indian Hall Orchestra traveled out to Fairfield Freshman School to compete at the OMEA Large Group Orchestra Competition. After performing three pieces, they performed a random song in front of a judge. The orchestra received the highest score possible. Absolutely outstanding, Braves. Keep it up. Our Indian Hill Middle School and High School Band and Orchestra programs are hosting their annual Pancake Breakfast fundraising event on Saturday, March 7th in the Middle School Gym. The 6th through 12th grade band and orchestra students will perform from 8.30 to 12.30. Come out and enjoy a great breakfast and listen to some amazing music. If you can't attend the performances, it will be streamed by IHTN on their IHTN1 YouTube channel. Click on the link in the description if you're interested in watching. Here's the moment you have been waiting for. Sam cuts Mr. Slonum's hair. Let's check it out. What's up, Brave Beats? 
I'm Sam Langokola, and this is the first ever Sam's Barbershop. Today we have Mr. Slonum. So what haircut will I be doing for you today? Um, the usual. Okay, easy. So tell me about yourself. Why'd you start teaching? Well, Sam, I had to do something. So I went back to school three weeks after my daughter was born and my son was a year and a half old. You know, Sam, when I started teaching, my hair was a different color. Really? What color was it? Brown. Yeah. It matched the name of the school I went to. What color was the school? What color was the school? Yeah. Brown. So what school is that? Brown. Never heard of it. So, Sam, how long have you been cutting hair? Oh, I just started today, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you I, nervous? Um, no. That's good, because they do say haircuts last forever. <laughs> it's just starting to feel like it. All right, I think it's time we take a snack break. Can you throw me those chips over there? You hungry? Sure. These are flaming Hot Funyuns, if you want to oh, try them. I don't know that I've ever had a flaming Hot fun. I know I've never had a flaming Hot Funyun, especially while getting a haircut. I'm actually sponsored by them. <laughs> oh, that's the best one I've ever had. Really? Ever. So where are you going to college, Sam? Uh, I'm actually going to barber school. <laughs> I'm going to learn how to actually do this. Okay, this is easy. Okay. Let me know if I'm hurting you. <laughs> oh! Women's History Month is an annual declared month that highlights the contributions of women to events in history and contemporary society. It is celebrated during March in the United States, United Kingdom, and Australia, corresponding with International Women's Day on March 8th. Women's History Month began as a local celebration in Santa Rosa, California. The Education Task Force of Sonoma County Commission on the Status of Women planned and executed a Women's History Week celebration in 1978. The organizers selected the week of March 8th to correspond with International Women's Day. In 1980, a consortium of women's groups and historians led by the National Women's History Project, now the National Women's History Alliance, successfully lobbied for national recognition. In February 1980, President Jimmy Carter issued the first presidential proclamation declaring the week of March 8, 1980 as National Women's History Week. Stay tuned for more facts about Women's History Month every week. And Braves, it's that time of the year again. Don't forget to set your clocks to spring forward one hour this Sunday at 2 a.m. so you can show up to school on time on Monday. Be sure to follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and email us with any school updates. And as always, stay classy, classy in Hill. Hello, everybody. I'm here with uh, Warren and Victor, and we're going to be going over Beyblades today. Now, uh, Victor, Warren, uh, now, can you tell what a Beyblade is for the viewers at home that don't know? Uh, a Beyblade is a spinning toy that you use uh, to battle against people. You use a launcher to get it spinning, and after that you just let the Beyblades do what they do best. So what makes up a Beyblade? Uh, well, there's four major parts. There's the bit chip, the attack ring, the weight disc, and the blade base. Mm -hmm. The bit chip is primarily a decorative piece to give your, uh, ring some, give your Beyblade some character. The attack ring is what it uses to actually knock out the other Beyblades. The weight disc helps keeps it from being knocked out and helps keep it in motion. And then the blade base is just the part that actually interacts with the ground. Now I understand that there's some connection with like creatures being in them. I've seen like the show that like there's some sort of creature that's embedded within the bit piece. Now uh, does that uh, creature affect the uh, battling at all or is it completely aesthetic? Yes, very much. That's one of the key points of Beyblade. If you have a better creature, your Beyblade will perform better. Interesting. So, uh, are there different types of Beyblades for like uh, different sorts of fighting styles? Yeah, so there's the uh, attack style, there's a stamina style, there's a defense style, and there's a balance style. And it really all comes down to how each of these four pieces are designed. Interesting, interesting. Now, uh, next week we'll be going over the creation of the Beyblade, correct? Uh, yes, we'll be going over uh, correctly suiting and creating your own Beyblade for your own sort of fighting style for yourself. And we'll see you two then. Thank you for your time.